by its very nature, anything having to do with perception is is fleeting and, and very personal and difficult to pin down. I was exploring this notion of perceptual ambiguity. I was interested in this idea of the viewer's displacement when looking at shapes and perspectives and colors that don't follow a logical or predictable structure. In a way, this is what we live with, with this daily diet of conflicting and absurd information, this untruths, half-truths. How do we react to that? What does it do to us mentally and physically, emotionally, spiritually? And in a way, I'm asking similar questions, but in a context of beauty and imagination, because if we can explore this without cynicism in a completely open fashion, then maybe we can find a place that helps us deal with it outside. I mean, the idea is not really to bamboozle the viewer, it's, it's really to challenge them to be aware of their own experience when faced with uncertainty. This approach models a way of processing tensions and conflicts that are inherent to the human condition. It's a kind of dialogue between the eye and the mind that creates physical sensations that, that are also very personal that we have to come to terms with individually. So this kind of phenomenological experience where at the moment of perception, it is really more that, the sensory part of it rather than the disconnect between what I think I see and what's actually there. So I'm interested in this contradictory space. The paintings give you clues, but it's really up to the viewer. The viewer has agency to decide how they're gonna experience the work, how they experience contradiction, how they experience absurdity, whether it's through playfulness or wonder or dissonance or meditation or something else. I've collected pigments probably for the last 40 years from all around the world. Everywhere I travel, I collect pigments. And it's also a way to integrate this planetary geology. The Earth's process for making minerals or Earth pigments is the same everywhere. The colors change, but it's like people, it's uh, like plants. We're all from the same source, whether it's geological or organic. I would work with these different formulas and binders. But one thing that uh, is true to this day is that my colors are never predetermined. And that's truly the mystery of the work that I adore because I never know what my works are gonna look like until they're finished. I begin with a color and that kind of leads to the sequence. So it's like an internal compass that just takes me to the process I can't really explain. And I wanted to liberate the work. I wanted it to, to breathe and to float and to be in motion. Also, if it was on a wall, then to be interacting with the architecture. I sketch a lot, I, I develop them, and I deliberately include contradictory light sources or perspectives vanishing points that are very, very far off the canvas, architectural anomalies, the spatial relations become very ambiguous and unexpected. And I like this idea of juxtaposing you know, disparate elements and enigmatic elements together to, to suggest something that is simultaneously believable, but impossible. I really don't think in binary terms, these kind of one thing or the other. Anything we have in our lives is grist for the mill, for the studio mill. My works, they're not meant to be 
overly analyzed. They're just meant to be a moment, an experience, in the same way we experience our truth, what we perceive.